Hello, amazing people. Welcome again to another amazing episode of uh, Python Tutorial Series. And in today's session, we are addressing a question by one of our subscribers. And the person was asking if um, it's possible to sort of generate, the person was asking if it's possible to have, um, what's the name, uh, sort of, a spatial plot again without necessarily using a for loop and we're trying to address that and i believe this was under coding snippet 3 i mean coding snippet 003 where we try to do the whole um, seasonal aggregations and then uh, visualize them all right so we'll try to um, address that in a bit so let's say we import our packages let's assume xre as xr but then again, whilst you're going on, if you are new here, don't forget to subscribe and then turn on post notifications for daily updates. Um, or as in when we post something, you do get it. All right. So let's import XR as XR, at least for now. Maybe we'll just make use of this alone. And so we are going to read our data sets. Okay, so we have XR read in. It's imported as XR. So let's let's say I'm going to call um my first data set say maybe DS1. Um so let's use XR that open data set. And then I read from my data. Okay, so let's use this as my data one and probably use this as uh, data two. Okay, so we're reading this. Now, I'm gonna make use of my matplotlib, so let me re-import matplotlib. So we have import matplotlib, the pyplot, as plt so we can have just the pipelots imported okay so a very simple way to do this let's say i would make use of my plt dot subplots and then i can specify the number of rows the number of columns the fixed size and all the other attributes and i assign this to the figure frame and then the various axes that we've created all right bear in mind there's a subplots that means it could be a single subplot or multiple subplots so I assign that to the axis and then I can then sort of pick the individual location. So let's say I'm going to make use of, um, uh, say probably a four, I mean, yeah, we're going to make use of, let's say the same seasons again for the various years. So we're going to group the whole data into seasons. So let's just, so we're going to have four seasons by the two data sets. So I need my four rows in this case, or maybe say four columns, whichever one works. So I'm going to assign N rows here as four and then n calls representing the number of columns as two so you have a four by two okay so if i run this it tells us um exactly how our plots would be like okay and bear in mind once we call our axis we'll just i mean think of like the axis we know they have different indices so we can call the axis by location now if it were just um let's say if i had specified just the rules or let's have just specified the columns alone. Now there's just a single um, dimension. So I could just call any of them, say maybe axis zero, and then it picks just the first item alone, or axis one, and it picks just the second one, all right? Uh, when we start using it, that's when you get to realize how functional it is. The same way, I mean, these are just two positions, so I can't go beyond the two. That would create an error, okay? Because it's out of bound. Okay, so we go back, let's maintain our four rows by two columns. So in this case, it means this first item is 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 2, 0, 2, 1, and then 3, 0, 3, 1. Okay, so we can call them by that. So I can call the item index 2, 0, and then we know whatever I'm going to do will be passed into this axis instead or the subplots panel. All right, so 
before we move on to that as well, let's go back and then try to group our data set. So we have our BS1 that group by say time. Um, first, let me see the dimensions of the DS1 to be sure it's, it's time. Okay, so that's what I did time. So, so we group by date time that season. Okay, so it creates the categories and so we can find the aggregation or the mean over our time, our date time. Okay, and so we can assign this to our DS1 season. Okay, and do same for uh, DS2. So this gives us the seasonal um, means for the respective years. Think of it as such. Okay, so now we come to the actual part of visualization. So over here, if I, before we move here, let's pick, if I have my DS1 underscore season, you know, the seasons are kept in there, so I could equally pick any of the seasons. I could just um, subset the season. And then we get to see how the seasons are um, pulled out here. So it's possible to also, just as we use a select method, we can select um, the season to be a particular season. So let's say maybe DGF. Then I have just a DGF data alone called out. Okay. And then mind we are still dealing with our data set. So if we want a data, we would have to pick the particular variable. So we'll be using the perceived variable. So um okay. So, so let's start off with let's say I want to create um various seasons. And I just pass in here DGF. So M A M, J J A, and then S O N. Okay. So of course, um, I can pick my first item. So let's say D S one season. Okay, and then I select where the season equals to this first position of my season. So let's say seasons. Um, season zero, okay? And that'll be the BGF, okay? And once I have that, I can just, um, bear in mind, we are supposed to also pull our precipitation. So I could do that at the end or before this. So let's see right here, passing my precip to pull the precipitation data, okay? And then just have a plot of that, okay? And in the plot, I'd have to indicate where the axis would go. So this AX will be equal to, I call this axis, all right? And then that's I want the DS ones to be in the first column. So then in that case, I'll be position zero on the column and then also the row. So I mean, row by column, so zero on the row, zero on the column. So once we have this, we clearly see what that contains, all right? Um, I believe there are some huge negative values in there, so we can, for missing data, so we can equally drop those ones. Um, okay, so let's go up here and then just have our DS1 season also being equal to DS1 season that square DS1 season. It's greater than or equal to zero. So let's see. I think there are some huge negatives for the missing data. So we can do same for the DS2 to remove all the huge negatives for missing data. Okay. So now we can visualize it and that's what we have. Um, then again, we can increase the figure size from here so that it's clearer. So fig size. It goes to let's say maybe eight by fifteen. So it's clear. All right. So we have this, and then let's do same for all the DS ones first. So all right. So this is at position one. That would be the MEM. Position two, 
position three. And in that case, um, we will change our rules, all right? So we want the MEM to go to row one, but still column zero. And then this on row two, column zero, this on row three. Um, simply we have uh, seasonal information. So it tells us this is for DGF, MEM, and then we have JGA and SON. Okay. And then we can replicate the same thing for our second data array. So BS2. And with the same approach, but this time we change our rows to, I mean, we change our columns to the second column. So that's all the column aspects being one, one, one. And sim as simple as that. Okay. And I believe from our data set, this was 2017, this was 2018. So we can just give them titles. So um, you remember what I said, you can simply pick any of them. So let's say I want to make use of, say the axis um, zero, zero. So I could just simply pick axis zero, zero. And then I set a title. Okay. So my title could be the, the 2017. All right, and then I leave a new line, so about two new lines, and then I would pass the season in there again so that the season is not overwritten. So I have this DGF, okay. And once we do that, you can see clearly that changes just the title for the top first panel, all right. And we can do same for any of the particular axis. So let's say I want um, zero on the row, one on the column, that's for the top right. And that should be for our 2018. Um, that's it, as simple as that. So we can equally achieve this without necessarily um, creating a for loop, okay? And if I need um, adequate sub um, space in between them, I can just make it of plt.subplots adjust. And then I adjust my height space or the height intervals between each um, plot. So let's use a value of say 0 0.5. And then now we have it spaced out properly. We can also do the same for the width space, um, which is a W space. So about 0 0.5. And then we have our data space properly. And so with this, it's quite easy to, you know, infer or make, um, just visualize your plot simply using the um, the plt dot subplot approach without necessarily looking through. But of course, I mean, if we had multiple um, items to plot out, you will notice that this is not a very healthy approach. Um, you could just achieve the same thing using just the um, for loop. So rather than going through this whole um, procedure, we could just simply, you know, in the next panel, let's just try to recreate this using this, um, the for loop. So in here, I could say, let's say for, say I and G in enumerate, I enumerate over the seasons, okay? What I'm doing is that in that case, the I will be the position or the index of all the um, elements within the seasons list. And then the J will be the actual value of each of the elements in the seasons list, okay? So once we have that, it means I could call my DS underscore one, sorry, my DS one season. And sub the precip variable out of it. And then let's go up here and then just call this. Okay. Um, I select my seasons where the season equals to, in this case, I don't need the seasons again. I could just call J because J would be for the particular season. And then in creating the plots, I know, okay, the column zeros are going to be for all the DS ones, and then the rows will change. So I could just change my row to I, and that's it. And then I could have same information here for DS2 and change the zero to one in this case. And that's it. And after all, this is outside the loop, so we could maintain this. and we achieve the same result, okay? So, I mean, you can achieve the same thing without using the for loop, but then, then again with the for loop, 
you you know save a whole lot of time and you you cut down your number of lines of code and th this seems more optimized than going to regenerate this for a longer or a very wider data set all right so that's all by way of uh, response to the question from our subscriber and if you're new here again like i said don't forget to subscribe and then join the family be part of our learning experience and if you have any questions you can ask and the team would respond to it i mean python is very easy it's very simplistic to use and so we learn better by I mean, engaging ourselves in communities. All right. So um, we wish that you try your hands on this. And if you have any issue, get back to us and we would respond to you. You can reach us via the comment section. And we would like to hear from you. So do get in touch with us. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.